I bet with Internet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money, two seconds later it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account. Race seven on the card is an MR94 handicap over 1,600 meters. It goes at 16.13. It's a nice race. It's a competitive race, but some really top horses running, horses that we can look to follow throughout the next season. And we're going to show you a rerun of number one, Aurora Storm. Way back on the 9th of April, ran second to Golden Peace. We selected this rerun because it's over exactly the same track and trip as race seven on Sunday. Snape needs the gaps to open. Golden Peace is still a runner. Aurora Storm on the outside. Down the inside, the Bayou's getting into it late on. Teichman's fighting back. Golden Peace and Aurora Storm, the last hundred. Any of four, but Golden Peace is looking to repel all challengers. And Golden Peace is staying on stoutly as they go to the line. Aurora Storm second, then came Release Me, and Time Taker taking off into the quartet. Well, as I mentioned, there we saw Aurora Storm running second over 1,600 metres at Hollywood Bet Scottsdale back on the 9th of April. It's had two starts since, and both have been very good runs, beating Pirate Prince on the 22nd of May and then second to Ponte Pietra on the 3rd of June. Hasn't raced since the 3rd of June. But uh, Dee's clearly with the draw. We know that the Richard Faree peter Musket combination, they have a wonderful strike rate. I'm only going to put two horses into this leg of the jackpot in the big six. I know you're going wider, mm. but I'm looking to the fancy horses. One, Aurora Storm, and seven, Kitchikal to get me through. It doesn't The winning possibilities don't end there. I understand that. But firstly, what do you make of Aurora Storm? I think uh, with the right horse in the race. Good draw. Last time out, hopeless position. Tristan Godden was, uh, uh, just gave the horse a chance and was running on nice. That horse, Ponta Petra, is a very nice horse from the Dean Canamea stable. I think he's now won uh, a three in a row. Uh, if this horse can find a finish, as we saw in that replay, and we've seen since, especially that last start, I think from draw number one, not going to be too far off them turning to that straight. You've got the right horse there, Graham. Possibly the horse to beat. Kitschikel, your cover. Yeah, last time out, a bit one-paced over that 1,400-meter trip. I see they're going a furlong further, which could be the answer because worn well at that penultimate start over 1,600 meters. So you're on the right two horses for the place accumulator and the bar pot. Uh, sorry, place accumulator, you're on the right two horses. For the pick six, Graham, I, I think there's some, you know, you mentioned at the top of this preview that you could follow some of these horses for the rest of the season. I think one of them is number six, Fateful Day, uh, who continues to slide in the ratings, although uh, ever so slightly from that last start. But again, 10 out of 13, lo penultimate start. 13 out of 15 last time out. Bigger fields, higher number draws. It's a smaller field, six out of 10. And uh, yeah, Atandiwem Gutla and Garrett Fenzel, you know, these, th this combination, I think wherever they race, I see now they're teaming up in uh, the Western Cape uh, where Garrett's got uh, uh, some horses there that he's taken down, follow them. Eight Willow Express, I was just telling you off air, I was a bit confused when Sean Terry raced the source over 1,200 last time out. Maybe he just had a plan in, of a race in mind, having a look at the, the fixture list just to bring the source along nicely. And although it hasn't worn in some time, a long time in fact, I think that rating dropped from a 104 to a 90. Good chance. And then I want you to make a choice for me, Graham, because I'm going to stick with my rule. I'm not going to include the field yet. I'm going to go five runners. Numbers one, six, seven, and eight are my firm first four. Between nine and ten, I want to include one of them. Which one would you go for? Wow. You're saddling me with responsibility. What, no, if, just, I just, what if I choose the wrong one and you go one leg out the pick six? No, I'm, I'm hoping I'm getting, that you come to it one and seven now. Because that's I'm, getting to, I'm going to answer the question. I'm not going to duck the issue. For me, number 10, Ideal Act. I sure. think that uh, he runs well. I think he needed his last run. They'll, they'll drop him out from that draw. I'm pretty certain about that. So he's going to have to have a little bit of luck in running. But if you're comparing Champompo, Champisi and Ideal Act, um, I hope I'm not making any enemies out there, but I would go with number 10, Ideal Act. But yes, I'm hoping that actually Aurora Storm and Kitchikel will be enough to get us through. Thanks to you, Graham. I am going to include number 10, Ideal Act, ahead of Shampompa Shampizi. So Graham's going 1 and 7 
in all his bets, basically the place accumulator and the jackpot and the pick six. I'm running for some cover here. One, six, seven, uh, eight, and 10 are gonna be the numbers. That's half the field. And I'm almost certain that will get you through race number seven. Personally, I think if you get this trifecta and quartet with the minimum spend here in race number seven, you'll get a decent return on your investment. Uh, my name's Danny Diliberto, founder of Ladles of Love. It was founded back in 2014. Communities we, s we work with are all over the peninsula and um, we're working with 138 beneficiaries now. We've grown exponentially. Um, we've been able to do that because of all the kindness that we have experienced um, from individuals and corporates such as uh, Interbet who just want to be part of the change.